Hi, my name is David Rosales. I'm the pastor of Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley, California. Tomorrow night, I'll begin a study in the book of Job. And as I've been preparing the study, I, I've seen how Satan attacked a man that God called blameless and upright simply because he was, he was one who feared God and hated evil. As I've been thinking about this, I've considered how Satan hasn't changed his tactics. He still attacks the upright, and he still desires to provoke believers to curse God to his face. In the case of Job, Satan destroyed all of his wealth, which included not just his physical wealth, but also the most precious possession that he had, his children. Job's response to such great loss was to say, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. After taking almost all that materially belonged to him, Satan went on to take his health from him. He struck Job with a disgusting disease that caused his body to rot, causing physical pain and humiliation that was almost unbearable. In the midst of all of this, his own wife said, Do you still hold on to your integrity? Curse God and die to lose your children, possessions, health. Well, that's bad enough. But to lose the compassion of your dearest loved one, well, that would be the worst pain of all because in such terrible times, we need them to encourage us, to help us, something that she refused to do. Instead, she told him, curse God and die, which was exactly what Satan told God Job would do. It would seem obvious that she had become a tool of the enemy. As we look at this great book, it'll help us to realize that even the righteous endure hard times. If there's anything that seems obvious today is that people have become soft and have forgotten that difficulties, testings, and trials are part of what we endure. Somehow, we've come to think that a trouble-free life is what we're to seek. And because many Christians have come under the spell of incomplete teaching, well, many are stumbled when the country they love has so obviously been exposed as being without God. And our country is morally bankrupt. And the answer isn't going to come through an election, though we Christians must awaken out of sleep and vote, because evil has taken off its mask, and we haven't even noticed. We need to vote, because it reveals the reality of our faith and the depth of our understanding of what evil actually is. I'm a Christian, and because I read my Bible, I'm also conservative in my views. And because I am, I'm grieved when I read that a verbally pornographic song by Cardi B could be the number one song according to Rolling Stone and Billboard's Hot 100 for several weeks in a row. I read the lyrics. They're disgusting. But that hasn't stopped professing Christians from listening to the song and finding it inoffensive. I'm grieved when I hear politicians extol the greatness of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a Supreme Court justice who was a champion for abortion rights and homosexual marriage, while simultaneously libeling and slandering Amy Coney Barrett because of her traditional values and professed Christian faith. Christians, get ready to once again witness how deeply hated your faith is. I frankly am concerned with the church because it seems that many think that the answer to our evil will come through an election when in fact it never has and it never will. The answer will come when the church awakens out of sleep and actually realizes that what should drive us to the realization uh, we've been asleep at the wheel and have compromised our moral influence uh, because we've turned our churches into political rallies and we argue politics with our friends. By doing so, we've substituted longing for people to know Jesus with a longing for the good old days, and we hope to stop the spread of evil by voting in the right person. I'm voting because voting expresses my moral values. I'm voting for the one who, whose actions have most closely aligned with my own sense of truth. I cannot and will not vote for someone who champions almost everything that Scripture forbids. What is truly tragic in the church today is, is people think that my comments are too political, but in fact, I'm not making political statements. What I'm doing is making moral statements. I pray that you have actually taken the time to listen to and evaluate the platforms of the candidates and the things that they have done while in office, and not the things that they say they'd like to do if elected. Like when Pedro told the student body that if they voted for him, he would make all of their wildest dreams come true. Nobody can convince me that there hasn't been a constant attack on our president since before he was inaugurated. Nobody can convince me that the lust for power and hatred for that man hasn't been the driving force behind such transparent attacks. With all of this said, 
Let us be prepared for, for more hard times after the election. If our president loses this election, get ready for hell to break loose in a way that you never thought could happen in America as we move further from our original values and morals and become more twisted than you ever thought we could become. If he wins, be ready for four years of attacks, unrest, and evil as the real masks are removed and a generation of godless youth reveal what being raised with, without fathers, discipline, and morals actually looks like. Either way, the only answer remains the gospel and transformed lives. Church, it's time to be serious about your faith. It's time to be open and courageous as you share it. This is David Rosales, pastor of Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley, California.